Here's a hot topic, how to do splash photography with your Myos splash kit. It's gonna be good. Hmm, that is good. Welcome to our food photography master class. You're gonna learn so much about food to take you from beginning to intermediate to even some advanced techniques here. We're gonna take you through seven different setups, everything from natural light to using strobe in the studio and show you how you can use lighting to help tell a story in your food photos. We're also gonna show you all the gadgets and the little tools that you can have in your studio to help you get those great shots you're looking for. Click the button below and get your download. Don't wait another second. Keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. Hi, this is JP Morgan here on the Slant Lens. You might ask yourself, what does a red pepper have to do with splash photography? Actually, absolutely nothing, except I'm gonna need a lot of water when I'm done eating my pepper. But let's talk about splash photography. We have always loved the MyOps triggers here at the Slant Lens, from time lapse to high speed. They just make great devices, scientific devices, to freeze motion. Well, this new one is a water splash kit. The ability to put a drop and have it splash in the water and to capture that on your camera and have that be consistent. That's a difficult thing to do, to be able to predict that each time and to be able to capture it. Not just the water splashing, but also drops that collide with each other and those kind of shapes that create. But not only are we going to talk about how to do that, how to set it up and to use your splash kit, but we're also going to talk about how to light it. At least three different ways to light your water, to give you a little different look each way, to make it very predictable in the lighting process as well. So let's get started. Let's start splashing. Let's get some splashing going here. So this is the MyOps Splash Kit. This is the world's first Bluetooth controlled water droplet splash kit. What we have here is we've got an articulated arm on the device. This articulated arm goes over to either a C-stand or a stand. We're using it with a C-stand just because we wanted to get a little further over the table here. You've got the brain here. It's going to trigger the drop. It's going to trigger the camera and the strobe. Going to get those three to coordinate with one another to be able to get the perfect splash every time. So that's really what this does. It's the ability to coordinate those three things, light, drop, and camera. You can control all these with just a push of a button here on your phone or on your iPad and shoot away. And once you've got your settings dialed in, you just shoot away and get great images. We're going to give you our settings. And the reason we're going to do that is that when you change things here, it changes the whole process. So we're going to give you the height that we're at, the, the delays that we used, so you can at least give you an area to start with and get some consistency with, and then you can change it up, make it your own, do exactly what you want with it. So let's just tell you exactly how we set this up. First off, we got a, a great glass bowl, and the reason we use this glass bowl is because it's got a very thin uh, glass edge. Uh, the depth of the bowl I don't think is super critical, but it's got to be deep enough that you can get a nice splash out of it. We just found that it was a lot easier when we got the splash closer to the water, and I think right now, from the water, we're at about... We're almost exactly at eight inches from the water. The closer you get this down, the more repeatable your, uh, your process is going to be. So I think closer to the water is better. So here's the brain of the MyOp setup. First off, you're gonna turn it on. Not with this pepper, you're not. There we did, we got it on and it's blinking. So that means it's on. Below that, we've got a, a jack for our uh, camera. That's just a mini jack. It's gonna go out to a Canon connection. Got all those different cables you can get for Canon and for Sony, for Nikon. We also have a flash cable here that's going to go to our speed light, be able to fire our speed light. And then, of course, right here, we've got a little way to test, and we can test our drops. Test and drop, test and drop, test and drop. So that's a pretty simple device. Now we've got to get onto the app and to set up the delays to be able to get the uh, splash that we want and start getting some magic. So let's launch our MyOps app. We're not using the uh, mobile remote. We are using the MyOps Splash. And there's our device right there. We can select it and connect. So there's my first page. There's up to four drops you can add, one after the other. There's several things we learned about this. First off, that first drop, don't make it too big. We went to, to a 50 for the size of our drop, which is kind of in the middle. So I click on that. You'll see there I see drop size. I click on the drop. I put five zero. And when I sweep down, it saves that. And I go back up and there's my first drop. Now, if you don't make the delay enough between the, the uh, first and second drop, then they're gonna start to blend together. You won't get a second drop, and you'll be able to hear it. It'll go click, click as it uh, drops the drops. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It depends on how many you're releasing. So just listen to that, and, if, the, and the, does, if you're only getting one click, it means you don't have enough of a delay between on the second drop and they're merging together. So I click on my second drop, I see that I'm going to keep the drop size the same, 50. That worked out well. These are the, the settings that we came up with as we tested this today. Then I'm going to sweep over. See those two dots? I'm going to sweep over, 
and I have a delay. We found 90 to be a great delay at this eight inch distance. So I'll set that on 90 and I'll sweep down and it's saved. We didn't do a third drop, we didn't do a fourth drop. Now my trigger. I don't want the trigger to go off as the drop is dropping from the dropper. I want it to go off as the drop hits the water, so I gotta have a delay. We played with different delays, and the delay we came up was 230. So we go here, we click on 230, 230, and sweep down, and it's saved. Now, that's our, our settings. For this setup, this distance, the way we've tested today, that worked out great. Several things to note. One is that, uh, like I said before, if you don't have enough delay on that second drop, it'll just merge with the first one. Another thing is that when you start playing with the delay, don't make big adjustments. Don't say, well, 90 was not quite there. I'll do 120. Make small adjustments, 95. See what that looks like, 93, 96. Make, the ver make them very small adjustments so you are kind of sneaking up on it because it's a very small area. And so when you make big adjustments, it just throws everything out of the whack. You'll be chasing your tail. You'll never figure it out. But just make those small adjustments. So start with this. Uh, drop size 50 on the first one, drop size 50 on the second one, a delay of 90 milliseconds, a trigger delay of 230 milliseconds with your dropper eight inches from your, your pool of water. Something I better mention about the pool of water, I don't know if I said it earlier, is get it full right to the very top so that it's like a, an infinity pool. So I'm now looking and it's just kind of going to fall out of focus in the background. You're not going to see the back of the, of the container. That makes it look really nice. Here are my camera settings, 200 ISO f11 because I'm on a 90 millimeter macro lens. It's that Tamron 2.8 90 millimeter. So I'm in pretty tight and that means my depth of field diminishes. So I wanna have f at least f11 to give me enough depth of field. I am also on uh, white balances on strobe and I'm gonna put the uh, shutter on bulb. And I'm gonna darken the room, so I'm in a dark room. And now when I hit the uh, start on my app, it's going to fire the drop and the strobe and take the picture on my camera in that dark room and it looks fabulous. So let's get to our lighting setups. First, it's just a strobe on the white background. Let's see what that looks like. And then we're gonna add some gels and some different lighting and just see what each of those look like. We'll just keep working on it, give you different options. Let's see what we got. Our first lighting setup is gonna be the 600EX, just simply aimed at the white background behind. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us bright, nice looking water, but as the water rolls, it's going to make deep, dark shadows towards us. We'll bring this fill cart and get it away. Uh, this light won't be on, this is just for the BTS. These lights on the background here will be off. That's our simple first setup. So black cloth, white background, single strobe, first light, here you go. So now we're gonna put a little bit of color into our splash. You know, you could use another speed light for this, but I don't have another speed light. So I do have an A6. This is the Baja uh, version, kind of studio version of the Baja strobes. So this is an A6. I'm gonna put a red gel on it here. This is gonna flare into my camera. So I'm gonna put this right up here. I've gotta have enough room so that the light can get through into the bowl here. But this can block my lens there. I'm gonna put this on a very low setting. Uh, almost uh, uh, one or two stops from being completely dialed down and just uh, shoot a quick shot here and see what we got. But I've got to kill all the lights in the room and uh, see what makes this happen. Okay, for this lighting setup, what we've done here is we've got a red gel on the speed light and a green gel here on the Baja, just aiming both of those at the background. That just gives us a nice kind of blending of those two colors together. It has a very pastel-y kind of look, not as hard red and green, and looks great lighting the water from behind. So let's take a look at some of the images with the green and the red gel on the white seamless. So we put a, a speed light up here with a little red gel on it, gave us some red kind of light in the formations that were you know, the drop formations. And that was cool enough, but what really worked was when we put just some old-fashioned red food coloring in the water. So in the water and in the uh, water that's creating the droplets. Now when it hits that red, it gives us a strong red color there. Then on the background, we put a yellow on our speed light, 
So now I've got a great yellow with that red juxtaposition. That color play is really fun. And those look fabulous in different formations against that uh, color combination. There are so many different color combinations you can come up with. Just using that food color for the color of your water and drops, and then another color in the background to give you that juxtaposition. So there's a lot of different examples. We've got examples of direct light and indirect light and colored water. Just look through those, but take all those principles, take those settings, and start to play with them and see what you can come up with. Do some different things with this. There's different applications for it, other than just making splashes in a little bottle. Splashing off from a spoon, off from a glass, uh, the top of a bottle. I mean, there's just a lot of things you can do to play with to make this really interesting to give you something kind of fun. Put them up on our Facebook group. Get over on the Facebook group, tag and put the uh, your MyOps water splash images up there. This is just such a great thing because you can lock yourself in the basement on a really cold winter day and just splash away and see what you get. You know, it's the kind of thing you do by yourself. You don't, it doesn't take a lot of equipment, but it's just fun to see what you come up with. So make sure you subscribe to us here on the Slanted Lens. We want you to be a part of our family and keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking.